Hey. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the show again, Brandon. Your last episode was so big. Uh, it's one of our most popular episodes, I think, because you've got so much energy and so much life in you. So thanks for coming back. Well, just to start, I've been on my man strike, man cycle for the last couple of days. So I'm Ooh. not in that happy, carefree. I've just been in this kind of like serious mode. So, you know, there's, there's, you know, peaks and valleys and elevations with this energy. Oh, okay, okay. I, I always only see tiger branding. Today we're getting man <laughs> Well, Well, sometimes a tiger gets, you know, sometimes a tiger gets irritated. I don't know, maybe this, this whole thing of this coat, it's starting to wear on me with, I can't even, I want to go get a coffee today. And they're like, you have to have your mobile app. And I don't have a mobile app. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> started driving Keep it real. crazy. I'm like, it, I was trying to show a property. I had the perfect buyer today. And the guy gets his lawyer involved to show a property because of the COVID thing. It's starting to drive me crazy. It's time it's that we crazy. open it back up. It's, it's driving me crazy, too. I think it's just because we're at that two-month mark, and people are just like, uh, okay, how just, long? And how then long? I hear, and then I hear, there's going to be no more sports games or concerts until we have a vaccination. It's just like, dude, enough. Open it back up. You know, people, listen, people get sick every single day, and I think they're really starting to see that the numbers have been completely blown out of proportion. And yes, it is a serious illness, but... Uh, obviously, it's not for that many people. I think the common flu and a lot of other things have, have uh, also done this. But don't get me into that because this is my <laughs> I won't get you into that. But we actually went to a show recently where we all had to be wearing masks. And, uh, um, booties, masks, gloves. It's like, I feel like I'm going into surgery now. Like, I need to, I need to be a surgeon. But you took your mask off for this picture, which I shot and I love. Tell me about this new listing of you and this tiger mural. Well, this is a very cool listing. It's on Cannon Drive. We're about to list it. It's this beautiful 16,000 square foot modern. And if people don't know where Cannon Drive is, it's literally, they consider, so there's, there's Cannon Drive, Beverly Drive, and Rodeo Drive. Rodeo Drive has all the most expensive shopping. Beverly Drive is kind of the in-between of, there's, there's nice shops, but not as nice as Rodeo Drive. And right. Cannon Drive, Cannon Drive is, is where all the locals and all the best restaurants and where the locals really go. So it's right on Cannon Drive, away from uh, a, a block away from everything. So it's walking. It's this beautiful modern home that Roman James and a guy named Ali did. And Roman James was responsible for uh, uh, helping do the Minecraft home and they just did a spectacular job on this. So that tiger is a mural that he had a guy from Italy do. As you know, I'm the year of the tiger. I love tigers. I have a lot of tigers, tigers in my house. And we saw this and we were like, wow, this is so cool. And no, you freaked out. You were like, I have to have one of these. Where'd you go? <laughs> I need this. I mean, it's so, tigers could be so cheesy because it's so 1980s. And, you know, there's a lot of tiger themes in the 1980s. But right, it's, tiger you know, print. Yeah, it's like, I'm just part of that 1980s. I'm part of that kind of cheesy. I have this really big, cheesy tiger rug in my house. So it's also that, but, you know, who doesn't love cheese on their burger? No, it's, it was baller when I saw it in the house. Because you're right, it could go either way. But it was baller. Look at this house. I only took a few pictures. This is a real talk exclusive, so we can't show too much, but it's built around this 100-year-old olive tree and just a, just a crazy, like... Yeah, that's a 200-inch that's a inch, um, that's a 200 inch TV screen that the color just... The color, the new TVs now are just incredible. And it's all these um, panels. I forgot, why am I blanking the name? But anyways, it's all these... Uh, my, I've been so out of the game <laughs> uh, with with it describing stuff, this COVID starting to affect my brain. But anyway, it's the LED panels that are just so vibrant and bright. And, it's, and this uh, is one of many in the house. There was like four, four I counted. Yeah, yeah. And he had all these like tigers and lizards coming out. It was pretty cool. It's going to be a fun one. It, this house yeah. has the bells and whistles. It's going to be a good one. So let's go to our, our game because I want to get right to it. We've got a lot of agents who are watching who have questions for you. We fielded the questions and put them into a game called Winning Like Williams. So 
I'm going to give you a question. You answer it. First thing that comes to your mind, just like, bow, 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 okay? Okay. Okay, first of all, before we start this, I have two things. First of all, I'm not the... I'm not the fastest when it comes. I have something with like my mind where sometimes it takes me a second. I don't know what it is. It's maybe it's early stages of dementia. Maybe it's all the toxins in the environment. Maybe I'm not the sh sharpest tool in the shed. And second, what I really think at, at, for the biggest thing for me has always been instincts. And it's about knowing the information, compiling the information, and going with your gut instincts. Nice. And I feel like I could give you all of these answers, but you never know how a meeting's gonna go. You might have a plan. It's all about preparation, and, and it's because preparation and determination equal luck. So you might go in there with a the full plan, and that plan goes completely sideways, and the guy loves sports, and all he wants to do is talk about sports. So. You know, you don't want to oversell him. And you're like, okay, let's go with sports. So you never know. <laughs> or, it's, or it's something that you see that you think that you're going to be, the husband is making all the decisions and you realize, no, it's the wife. The wife <laughs> is yes. controlling everything. So it's about gut intuition and really understanding the room and being aware. Because if you just come in with one plan and this is what I'm going to do, you might come off too overplanned over stage and i think what's really made us successful is that we've done our homework we know what's going on in our area and the real estate market and what's going on in the world and i think we really kind of you know choose to be the experts and then we could you know everything is off the cuff and we have a plan that we go in with and a strategy but we're also willing to go other ways with it right i've seen so you my you pivot, you pivot very well. You go in there and then you're like pivoting. We pivot now. Okay, so let's play the game. This is winning like William. First okay. question, your go-to power move in a negotiation. What is it? Three, two. Go-to power negotiation. Well, I think if, if you're really truly representing your clients and you really have all the information and you're, you lay out the facts and you say, guys, Look at the price per square foot. Look at the comps. Look what's sold. Or you go, guys, you own the property next door, okay? And you want to own, you own this property and you want to own the property next door. You might be overpaying, but let's be honest with you. You're going to control the entire property. And sometimes you got to overpay. And it's just yes. the fact of it. But look at the five to 10 year history of real estate. And if you look back, you're not overpaying. Like I was just looking yesterday at the flats of Beverly Hills. You can't get anything good in the flats of Beverly Hills anymore for $10 million. And Nothing. I remember, I remember when I started in this business and you could get something really cool for four or $5 million. I mean, inflation, inflation and, and, and you know, all the interest rates now that's going on. It's just the market keeps growing and it is what it is. Like the hundred year history of real estate. Yes, that's why you got to buy now. Um, it's, uh, Yogi in the comment section says the neighbor is the best client. Next question. <laughs> Let's go with you never. Next question. You never say this to a client. You never say no to a client. You never say no to a client unless wow. they ask you something completely absurd. And they ask you something that, you know, basically uh, is, is, you know, that would basically go against the fabric of what you are. So you always try to come up with it and go, hey, listen, I tried my best and they're not doing it. But you gotta go and try for them because you're there to serve the client. Even, even if it's them. ridiculous, even if it's just like ludicrous. Uh, you know, you could say I've already tried that and I think it's a bad move. But if you want me to, I will try for you. And then like I was in a negotiation and we had a deal for 8-7, and the guy goes, let's go back at 8-5. I go, we already made the deal at 8-7. We already agreed. It's kind of in bad faith. He goes, no, go back now at 8-5. I'm like, are you sure? Like, are you kidding me? And so <laughs> I, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea, and I think it's in bad taste. And so I go, okay, I'll do it for you. I call the realtor. I go, he wants it at 8-5 because everything that's going on with the whole COVID-19. And she was like, okay, well, there's two other offers on the table, and the – um. And the owner now thinks that she doesn't want to work with you guys. She wow. Wow, that's a real life story. Real I life told story. my client, 
I told my client, sorry about that. Somebody called in. I told my client, I told you not to do that. Like I, I, I'm here to work for you. And I told you, I don't think right. that. And I fought with him about it, but I had to do it. And listen, it. sometimes Next you're question. not going to, listen, winning like Williams, I lose a lot. Okay. This is a numbers game. Okay. But the more numbers you put up and the more you get out there, the more you're going to win, but you're not going to always win. Listen, we're still in the game on this deal. I had to backtrack. I had to, we're, we had to give more money now. So now wow. that eight seven is gonna might cost them another two hundred thousand dollars. Wow, that's a great story. It's like, then what do you do in that situation? You had to come. You you tell them, guess money. what, buddy? There's two other offers now because you wanted to go back when we already had a deal at eight seven. This is costing wow. you. I told you not to do it, and it is what it is. And here's the. The, the honest reality of the situation. Because if I wasn't honest with him and I kind of just threw my hands up and he lost mm -hmm. the deal, he would blame it on me and say, you fucked me. That's true. That's my true. I, I hope everyone is taking notes because this is some good stuff. Next question. Mm -hmm. How to run a meeting? How do you run a meeting? How do you go in and command a room, Brandon Williams? Okay, like I said, it's all about strategy and what are you going for? What is the end game? What is the purpose of this meeting? Beginning, middle, and end. Beginning, middle, and end. It's very simple. So my, let's just say my, my, my beginning is, hey, guys, pleasure. Oh, my God, beautiful property that you designed. I can't believe you used that architect. It took you four years to do this. Oh my God, you guys must be going crazy at this point. So it's commonality. It's, 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 it's commonality. We understand the pain. We understand mm -hmm. what you've gone through and where we are right now. So they go, oh, this guy gets it. He's not just some guy trying to come in and get my listing and just right. make money off me. Middle, okay, guys, here's what we have. Here's the comps. This is what we sold. This is what our competitors sold. Here's everything. Here's our marketing plan. And then the end, here's why I think we are the best. We are the best because we are willing to do whatever it takes to get this property sold in terms of marketing, showings. We will be here at any time. You could call us at any time. We're always available. We want to work with you and we're going to be honest so that this is an honest journey along the way. And we'll tell you what's going on. If they go, oh, well, we want to overprice it. We could say, listen, we could try this strategy or we could try to underprice it a little. So it's two different strategies and you give them options and you work with them and you hear them out and you don't talk the whole time. You let them talk to really see where they are and gauge them out. And that's where it goes back to instincts. I can say I've seen that in real life. You guys, Williams and Williams can hold on to a listing for three years. You have a story coming out of the Wall Street Journal on Friday because you take your listings and you hold on to them and you really are with it and you invest in them and you try different strategies. And I think that is uh, something that's gonna come up on Friday that people can read and really see what you've done. Uh, well, did well I, I love sayings. I love sayings. Like I, I, I live by little sayings. And I have sayings that are like, no pain, no gain. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and it's like through struggle is like the greatest rewards. And there are some listings that literally you just want to, you want to just beat yourself in the head and just go, ah. But you hold on to it. Like, you but you're going to see, you're going to see it through. And, you know, you would hate to put that much time and effort and then watch the next guy all of a sudden put a for sale sign on it and sell it. You're like, ah. And listen, it happens. <laughs> You're not going to always win. But, you know, you got to try things out. And at the end of the day, there's so many variables. It's not just you. It's the property. It's the sellers. It's the karmic. It's the timing. It's the, you know. It, the it's, buyers. It's, yeah, it's, it's everything. Let's keep going on. Let's keep going. Okay. Three listing appointment rules give us your three rules that you give to your employees duration doing your homework because then it makes things easier but obviously be on time look good be presentable be enthusiastic inspire inspire people and, and show people your passion i think you know i always say this there's one thing that never goes out of style and that's passion and when you go in the room and you engage people and you let them talk and you really listen and you hear them and you go off of that because you're going in there to, to, to list a person's property that they own.
that they put up all their money. You didn't put up any money yet. Right, right. They own it. They put up all their money. And this is probably their biggest asset. So you got to take it really serious, but at the same time, have fun and don't come off too overbearing. And I mean, that's hard for me because a lot of times, <laughs> like, Christ, what the fuck? Like, you know, but, you know, I think it's what made it passion. It's also, you know, having a partner like my wife. She's we're right. kind of the yin and yang, and she could come off very level headed and soothing, and then I'm kind of come off big. So sometimes, you know, I let my wife do her thing because she they're more attracted to her, and it's understanding the room. Right, and so you never you never lay low, and she comes in big. Uh, you know, I let her. Sometimes she just has it better than I do, and sometimes I have it better than I do, and sometimes the other day we went in on a meeting and I don't know, maybe we were off. We hadn't been in on a meeting together. I think in a couple months and I thought the meeting went horribly. I'm like, ah, oh, we weren't on the same page. You were saying one thing. I was saying the other, <laughs> Listen, you're not going to always win, man. And it's all about, but it's about getting out there. And you know, right now I haven't stopped working every single day. We closed three deals yesterday. So there's, wow. there's still, you know, listen, Banks are still giving loans. Interest rates are still low. And people still need a place to bunker down in this COVID-19 thing. So people are still buying homes. You know, unfortunately, people are, uh, are out of work. But there are people that are still buying. Right. Oh, we're getting great things in the comment section, like truly a perfect partnership. And I'm an Indian, and I approve of that dope shirt. India, what's up, man? I love the no neck. <laughs> um, the next next question is a hard one. When do you tell your clients to pounce on an offer? Like this is the one you should take it. That I know in my blood, in my Williams and Williams winning blood, this is the one. How, what well, is, when do we pounce? Well, usually they say your first offer is your best offer, and I find eighty percent of the time. Um, that that is true and i don't know why it's true i haven't done it but it's people that step up and that are passionate or like i like this house those are the people you want to work with i always say pick and choose your horse you could have seven offers but you know a lot of people could just all of a sudden want it now because everybody else wants it and people want it for different various reasons but i really i think what made us successful is going back to the gut instinct of really picking and choosing who the right buyer is, even though the other offer could be more money. I so love I'm that. Not, it, it's not always about, it's not about the money to me. And, and some people will say, well, you're stupid. It should be about the money. And this is all about the money. But to me, it's not. To what me, is it's it about hard. then? What is it's, it about for you? It, I was taught the best kind of deal in this business is a fair deal where both sides get what they want. Nice. That's the best kind of deal. And I truly believe that. And I see all the time where people will, will, will choose our offers over somebody else, and then they end up renegotiating and dragging the whole thing out and making it a horrible <laughs> experience. And I told the agent, like, guys, we're not here to play games. We're here to make real deals. <laughs> like, if you want us to play this scummy game and we lock it up and then try – but, you know, listen, I think our numbers – and, 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 and our work really shows that, you know, we continually keep doing bit deals now. We've been doing this for 14 years together as a partnership. And I right. think some people are like, oh, they're young kids. I'm 45. I'm not a kid anymore. But like, okay, their, their reign will end. They got lucky. They're, you know, they were taking some kind of magic potion and it's going to end. But <laughs> I, think, I think the numbers and the science don't lie. And I think that, you know, at the end of the day, it's about really putting – you know, your energy in the right places. Well, people in the comment section are agreeing with you. I love that philosophy. The best deal is a fair deal, says Kristen Hutchins Design. Let's play a game, Brandon. Thank you for winning like Williams. That was amazing. Let's play a game. I'm going to show you a property. It's called One Off. I'm going to show you a property and uh, the price that it sold for, which will be one number off, and you will tell us what you think. Here it comes. Let me okay. make it big. This is... Aaron Bay Shuck, CEO of Warner Records, new property. It's designed by Simo Design. It's 5,300 square feet in 90210. It's absolutely, it's absolutely stunning. I believe it's sold off market. I believe I never got to see it, and that property is gorgeous. Or maybe I did see it a long time ago, and they did a remodel on it. I believe Oak. it's on Oak Pass. I could be wrong. I'm not always right. 
This was owned by Harry Styles, and then they tore it down, and Seymour Designs rebuilt Oh, my it. God. We sold that property. You sold, we sold Harry it. It's Styles? It's on Oak Pass, right? I, I don't know. It doesn't say. I'm yeah, it's on, it's on Oak Pass. We sold that to Harry Styles. Okay, so then he sold it for a loss to, uh, to the owner. Yes, he sold it. Yes. Yeah, they, he ended up firing me for no reason because... One of his managers was friends with another realtor. I'm not going to name names. Okay. I love it. Keep it real talk. Yeah, and, and they lost money for him. See, Harry, you should have never fired your original realtor. I always had the best intentions for you. Maybe you learned a lesson through it. Listen, we all learn our lessons. I love this. This is crazy. That's the truth be told. And now it was bought by Aaron Bay Shuck. Uh, it was bought for, here's the number. This is a fake number. 12 million, is that number, the two is wrong. Is it a three or is it a one? And hold your answer because the comment section, there's a delay. They're going to guess along with us. Is the correct price of the property $11 million or $13 million? It actually, you're right, it closed off market late last year. I can't believe we sold that property. We I got hope the address. We, we're getting the address in the comment section. Uh, we're selling the property next door, too. Uh, we're about to get the property directly next door to that. That is crazy. They did a fabulous job. I'm going to say, should I answer? Well, let me give you the address first because it's sliding in. I already know it's on Oak Pass. We sold it. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's 9551 Oak Pass. Is the correct answer, Brandon, an 11 or 13? We're playing one off. What's well, I, I, I truly don't know this. And I'm just going to have to say, and I could be wrong, but I was born on the 13th, so I always pick the 13th, whether right or wrong. Whether right or wrong, you are wrong. It's a yes! million dollars. <laughs> 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 and everyone in the comment section got it. Uh, Yogi, you got it first. Moving on, we're going to talk about... See? We're, we're going to talk about this article in the real deal featuring your property that you're listing with of course your beautiful wife Rainy Williams and Tyrone McKillen of Compass tell us about why this property was off market and you decided to put it on market now during all of this well uh it was off market we put it on right before the whole COVID thing hit and then uh you know we we were weren't really that able to show it because of this whole COVID thing. It's a very, very unique property. It's Ando, who is one of the great Japanese architects, probably one of the greatest architects of all time. He's Japanese. Mm -hmm. and it's a complete concrete home. Uh, just to build a home like this took about six or seven years. And wow. it was about roughly $5,000 a square foot. Um, I mean, everything, it's, it's literally out of a James Bond movie. It's like, it's like, it could either be James Bond's house or the bad guy in James Bond. It is so cool. It is such a unique house. There's only one other Ando house in uh, Malibu, and that's Bill Bell's house, which has probably got to be worth $250 million. I think he spent close to $150 million building this house. And it's very unique because I don't think there's any Ando houses that are for sale in the entire world right now. So this is mm -hmm. the only one. And so the Real Deal article focused on why you decided to, you know, with in-person showings being back, why did you decide to list it right now? And you had some amazing quotes about why in showing. Well, well so because important. people aren't traveling, people aren't going to Europe. So, you know, I think it's a good time to get it out there because people are gonna wanna live in Malibu. I mean, Malibu lifestyle is amazing. I actually right. am fortunate. I was, it was my dream for the last 30 years to own a home in Malibu. And I was finally able to buy a home last year. I bought a really cool mid-century Buff and Hensman. And yes. I actually just, it's, I remodeled it. It was in complete dishevel. And I remodeled it. It took about a year. I was actually there this morning. And it's just such a beautiful vibe. Malibu's so cool because you're 35 minutes away from the city except you just feel like you're in nature and you see whales and you see dolphins. And now we got Malibu Nobu, we got Cross Creek, we got the Soho house. So it's this retreat out of LA that's only 35 minutes away. Okay, an hour if there's traffic, but if you, if you time it right, it's 35 minutes away, it's 20 something miles. And it's just such a great place to kind of 
decompress. Every time I hit that Pacific Coast Highway, it's right, like instantly right. a deflation in my body of stress just goes, and I just feel better. Brandon, when do we get to see your Malibu house? Uh, man, I, well, I'm putting in the furniture this week. And I can't wait. I, I, I mean, I'd love to show you guys. I'm really, I, uh, we posted, I think Rainy posted a couple pictures of it. Did you, Rainy? No. Oh, she didn't post pictures of it. My no, buddy. I want to see it. Pictures. What? I, it's I pretty funky. It. It's cool. You know my vibe. I like that I do. vintage, mid-century, funky, swanky, sexy vibe. So I think, I think we recreated it right on the beach. And a Buff and Hensman, you guys love to buy architectural homes. I want to say that's our show for today. Brandon, thank you so much for coming on. I'm just really getting like, warmed up. Alexander, Alexander, I'm just getting warmed up. Let's, let's, <laughs> I, I have another hour in me. Oh, keep going. I have one more question then for you. Okay. Yeah. Back to winning like Williams, we didn't ask what your best closing tactic is. Yeah, what you, my oh, best? Like, what I'm talking about is like. Okay, I'm going to tell you what my best, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what my best closing tactic is. Okay. So. Here's really what I think, and if you look at everything, I think fear now in this, in, in this climate, in this world is, you know, religion, a lot of religions are about fear. If you don't do this or that, you could go to hell. Um, if, if, if you don't stay inside and wear a mask, you're going to get this and die, okay? If we don't attack this country, we're going to get invaded. So everything's about fear. And I, and I really hate to use those horrible things, but it really is the truth. If you don't take your vaccinations, you're going to die. Okay. And everything is so extreme. And I think some of the best artists, my favorite artists like Metallica, it was about, it was like life or death. And if you listen to Metallica, it's all about anti-government anti-war just like black sabbath if you listen to Jane, jim morris in the doors it's all like walking that fine life of life or death so i like to come in and just be like buddy okay this is what you dreamed of you worked hard this is what you say you wanted we're at the finish line now brother we're at the finish line we're we're, we're gonna get this deal and this is everything you dreamed of. And now the fear is starting to kick in of maybe I don't need this big, maybe I don't need this home. Maybe this is gonna be too much responsibility and what's the cost, what's taxes? And I go, live out your dreams. How many great summers and winters do you have left? So you paint a picture for them. You like, you paint by numbers at the end. Well, well, for instance, I was selling a house, a very expensive house, around $100 million to a guy that was 70 something years old. And, and I said, you're a billionaire and you don't own a house on, in Malibu yet. And this has been your dream for the last seven to 10 years. And your dream is to play on the beach with your grandkids. And I said, let's be honest with you, buddy. I said, we know you're overpaying. It's off market. This is the only thing you want. The guy doesn't really want to sell, but how many great summers do you have left with your grandchildren? Let's be honest with you, 10 more? You're 73, you're 83. I mean, listen, men are, the average lifespan of men is 75. The average lifespan of women are 80 years old. So how many more? You're a billionaire. Who are you going to give it to? Spoil your kids. Enjoy it. Take right. it and buy the one thing everybody wants, a great home, even if that's your own little condo, even if it's 800 square feet of paradise. Once you own a home, nobody could tell you, oh, did you park in that space? That's my space. Oh, don't uh, quit banging on the walls. Uh, no, it's, this is like, I lived in buildings my entire life and I was so sick so of true. You're not allowed to have two dogs. You're not allowed to own two cars. You're not allowed to park there. You're not, it's like, I finally could just tell people like, I own this, leave me alone. Right. So, you know, I really look at like, you only live it once, as we know this. I believe in karma. I believe in maybe many lives. I don't know. I believe in heaven. Now. I believe in a lot of things. I came home, and I built it, and I did it. And it makes me so much more of a man to be like, oh, I did it. I own this. I did it. And it's really, it's manning up, womaning up, and going after your dreams, because who the hell wants to keep giving renters more money and not putting it in your own piggy bank? And right. it's like, go after your dreams, live it. How many more great summers do we have left? Well, not this one. Power <laughs> to the people. Power to the people. Go for yours. They're only going to make things 
uh, tougher right now. And you just got to go out there and don't believe the hype. Don't live in fear. Don't watch too much news and just do your thing because this life is a beautiful place and earth is amazing. And God gave us this wonderful place to live out our dreams, live out love and, and have a good time. So your best closing tactic is really to paint the picture for them and say, this is what you wanted, you know, really, really understand your client and paint why they wanted it and remind them of that. I, yeah, I and, really and, and guess what? Who knows if we're going to be around tomorrow, next month. It's like, aren't you going to want to say, like, I owned a cool home and I was living the life I wanted to live? No, or, a, right now. or a condo. It's like, or even renting your magical spot. It doesn't matter. But go to where what makes you happy. This is where you have to live, sleep, eat. Potentially now we're working in our properties. It's like, you know, do it. You deserve it. And interest rates are never, be, uh, never so low. Listen, I have mortgages on my properties. I'm not that rich where I just paid cash. I'd love right. to say I am, but I'm not a tech genius. My mom never said, hey, buddy, go to tech. You can make a billion dollars with starting a stupid app like TikTok. But it is what it is. <laughs> no, we not saying it's a stupid app. <laughs> not saying it's a stupid app, but I'm just saying it's like so like I could have created that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we did you have to check out our TikTok episode yesterday. It was interesting. You would be amazing on TikTok. You would kill it. Well, if one of my client one of my clients helped uh helped with doing TikTok and his house is coming up on he built a big beautiful house on Bel Air Road, which I want you to uh it's it's incredible and he had a big part to do with TikTok. I want to see it. I want to see it. One more question from the comment section. They're loving this in the comment section. They're like, speak to us. This is great. Please repose. Um, I love this question. Not how have you changed your marketing tactics, because that'll be in the paper on Friday, but how are you dealing with low ball offers right now during COVID? And people being like, eh, we're going to give you half of what you're asking. You know, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Sometimes people might need a low ball offer. Sometimes people might need to sell. And sometimes the house might only be worth that low ball offer. I mean, listen, there's True. ridiculous offers where somebody paid 40 million or whatever, $4 million and somebody offers them half. Okay, that's insulting. That's a bad offer. And it's not a foreclosure and it's not, okay, I, I get it. But an offer is an offer. And I like to use offers to build momentum. I like to use offers as well. We're one step closer to making that offer that gets this deal done. So listen, I like action. I like involvement, you know, and it, it, you know, you're not going to get married by, you know, most people don't get married by dating one person or one date. So you got to play true. the game. True. Very true. Well, do you do foreclosures? Do you, have you ever bought a property at foreclosure for auction? Do you play that game or do you tell your clients don't play that game? Unfortunately, I haven't. I have usually too good of taste. So most of these prop <laughs> or, or I don't have enough money. It's one or the other. But um, yeah, most of the properties I like will probably just sell. But listen, there's some massive pieces of land where people got in trouble. And no, I haven't done it yet. I've had cl I've helped clients out do it. That's interesting. Okay, well, good to know. You've got your house in Malibu. Mm. We've, we've been talking for over half an hour. Brandon, thank you for sharing all of your experience, all of your insight, and your energy is on point right now. So you're ready to go take over the world. I feel like I'm done with my. I feel like I'm done with my menstrual cycle. You got it out of me. I got it out of you. You just pushed it out. Man, I was so cranky the last two days. I was just getting so tired of this. And it's like, you know, I think really the key is I'm going to end it with this. Whenever you give back and you help other people, and I was watching um, JFK Jr. gave this amazing talk on this on this show called. I mean, Robert Kennedy gave this amazing talk on the show called London Real. I would say everybody go watch it. But he said with his family, it, you had to give back. Because when you're depressed, the quickest way to get you out of depression is helping other people, inspiring other people, lifting other people up. And I feel like this is one of those shows that helps other realtors. And listen, I'm not holding anything back. I'm giving you guys all my secrets, everything that I do to get me through the day and, 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 and make me a successful realtor. And I believe we all can do it. We all can work together and there's all enough out there for everybody. I love that so much, Brandon. You gave us your time, you gave us your insight. You're my Tony Robbins of real estate. Go kill him.
Love you guys. Love you. Bye, Brandon. <laughs> Uh, Brandon's killing it. We've got so many listings coming up. We're blessed to be working with Williams and Williams on so many things. I mean, they email us their listings every day. And I'm like, oh my God, this one's even bigger than the last, but they also are humble. They give back. They are on many charity boards and I can't wait, wait, wait to see that Malibu home. So thank you everyone for joining us. We will post this to our IGTV live later. I know some of you missed the beginning and uh, that way you can catch all of Brandon's insights right here. He was very real today. So thank you, Brandon, for keeping it real talk. Bye-bye.